So I'm getting ready to hit up the Wainucci. I'm gonna go search for the John Tornell shooting site. Uh, it's a memorial for him there. It's a place where a man named John Tornell died in a shootout with the police. And now, the thing about John Tornell is a lot of people either see him as a folk hero or a villain. He was a man who, he's called the Wild Man of the Wainucci. He was born in 1880, September 4th, 1880. He died 16th of April, 1913 in a shootout with the police. Um, well, basically, he, he basically lived off the grid. He lived out in the woods, lived off the land. He had very little contact with uh, society. He, he shunned society, but he wasn't a total owner. He would come into town and he would visit his sister and, and things of that sort. And um, when I first heard about him, I figured he was just, you know, a serial killer, so I didn't take too much interest in him. He killed like six people. But the more you look into the story, you start to realize he might have killed those people in self-defense. He was just a guy that wanted to be left alone. And when it all started, his trouble started when, uh, <clears throat> in 1911, he was skinning a cow on the field at his sister's place. And a couple shots went over his head, gunshots, bullets. And so he returned fire and he ended up accidentally killing his two twin nephews, his sister's kids. And so then he split. He took off, went out. And hid in the woods like he was accustomed to doing and um, he ended up hiding for for 19 months. It was a 19 month manhunt. There was two deputies that went out looking for him and they were killed. They found them murdered. He killed them and he gutted them. So after 19 months he the law caught up to him. He killed one of the deputies outside his little cabin and then he was shot and killed. But um, before then he had robbed a store that also served as a bank and he took 15000 in cash. And somewhere up on the Wainucci, in the Oxbow area, or along the banks of Wainucci, he hid the money. It's never been found, so today I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna look for his memorial, his the site of the shootout, and I'm gonna go take my metal detector and see if I can find where that money is, go search for it. Maybe I get lucky, find some coins or, or whatnot. So yeah, the, another important part of that story too is, um, when John Turnall was out there skinning that cow, his nephews were out actually bear hunting. There had been a bear that had been terrorizing the area up to Sats up all the homesteads. And so, while he's up there, he's skinning the cow, a couple shots go over his head. He thinks someone's trying to kill him because he's, you know, taking this cow illegally. So he returned fire while his nephews were out bear hunting. They, they think that maybe the nephews thought he was a bear and they were shooting at him. So yeah, he accidentally killed his own nephews. And that's just gotta be gut-wrenching. Now it had to be horrible. Because it's been said that he absolutely loved those kids. So, you know, that would drive a man insane to accidentally kill your own family like that. So I'm guessing this must be the spot. It's 26.9 miles up the Wainucci Road. Just gotta go by a down tree. There's a big T on the stump. I'm guessing that would be for John Turno. I keep mispronouncing his name. It's John Torno. It's hard for me to say. Chunk of leather boot. No disrespect. Yeah, I'm supposed to go 50 yards down this road. And there's a trail that cuts off, goes another 100 yards to the spot where John Turno had a makeshift cabin and was gunned down. Oh, here it is right here. So the markers. Uh, spot one, two. I have to try to figure out what these mean. So John Turnall shootout, friend or foe, we'll never know. April 16th, 1913. Dedicated April 20th, 2013. So, about 100 years after he was shot. Oh. Some gifts left for him. A friend or foe, we'll never know. That's a signing book. Cool. And 
Yeah, so there's a sign-in book I signed in. Uh, it says, remember, Torno never took anything without leaving something in return. So I left a little bit of change in here. That's all I have to leave. So, yeah, pretty cool. Here's a picture of John Turno. Yeah, after he died, they actually came back later and tied his body to a tree, took pictures of it, and used that to make postcards, which they evidently sold quite a few of them. It was pretty sick. Dear Tornow visitors, it is well known by the Sheriff's Posse that Torno had several caches of supplies and weapons in the surrounding area. In August of 2016, I found this. Historical research shows this kettle was sold by Sears and Roebuck in their 1904 catalog pictured below. It was found near a creek bed 37 to 45 minutes by foot from this location, 7.5 inches underground. Wow. I'm thinking this is what's left of it. There's some more artifacts they've recovered from the area over here. These items recovered from the surrounding area. Turnouts, tornouts, torno, probably part of his stove, some cooking supplies. Well, it says CH Packer, the wash of. The Washingtonian was a local reporter who joined the posse to photograph the shootout scene in 1913. It was reported by Packard that Tornow had scooped out a small hole at the edge of the pond about 15 feet from the east end of this camp. More than 100 live frogs were strung together on a piece of thread for future use. This frog pen indicates its possible location. So probably right about here. Torno Lake, Torno. Let's we'll see if we can get to the lake. Probably was a lake here a hundred years ago though. That was him when he was a kid. Left to right, unidentified. Lewis, so that would be him right there. John, Ed, Mary, Fritz. Unidentified, so. That's John Turnow right there. There's John. Tornow at the headquarters of the Sheriff's Posse in Monsanto. That's after he's dead. I think these are the people he killed. A.B. Elmer, Colin McKenzie, Lewis Blair, Charles Lathrop, and the Bauer twins, those were the kids, well kids, they were 17, 18, or 19 years old, I'm not sure which. William and John, I'll have to look up their age. I'll look up their age and I'll put it in my narration. I assume that's where people were standing when they got shot, or shot from. So the markers must represent where Deputy Giles, Quimby, um, Lewis Blair, and Charles, Charlie Lathrop were standing one tore now open fire on them and then they were there is number but four I don't know which number I'm corresponds guessing that's probably with which where Turno was shot and number four is likely where Torno was next to his cabin there where, where he fired from and got shot 
So if you go in the order of the way things unfolded, number one must be where Blair got hit, number two is where Lathrop got hit, and number three is where Kimby fired on Torno. Yeah, I'm not going to metal detect here just out of respect. Respect to the people who died here. Torno and the people he shot. But tune in for future episodes where I search for Tornow's treasure in the Oxbow along the Wainuchi River. Yeah, the John Tornow shooting happened over 109 years ago. People are still talking about it today. Like, you know, a lot of people who don't know, friend or foe. <clears throat> you know, would he shoot those people in self-defense? Is he a cold-blooded killer or... Or what? You know, nobody really knows. The more I dig into his story, the more it seems like the law had no intention of bringing him back alive. No intention of giving him a fair trial.